Yo, what's good guys? We are back on the grind set for season four, knocking out these team affinities super fast, um, trying to get them done hopefully very soon. As you guys might can see, I am over 50% in pretty much all of them. Um, there are a couple that are lacking, but it's because I haven't played any games with those boss cards. As soon as I do, uh, they'll be over 50% as well. So um, I do this video every time there's a team affinity. Go over it, go over if there's any changes, give you some quick tips to try to figure, uh, you know, how to approach this in the fastest way possible. Um, there are some slight changes between Team Affinities. For, for the most part, it is usually a very similar grind. Um, so if you are new and you do enjoy the content and it is helpful, I would urge you to like and subscribe. Uh, it does mean a lot and it gets our watch time from subscribers up quite a bit. Um, so here we are. Um, I'm going to walk you through the basic process. If you have seen these before, uh, you can sk skip ahead a little bit. I'll probably have a chapter um, for when the newer stuff starts, but you've probably seen this before. You can see we just sold a DeGrom. That was one of our pools from doing Team Affinity, so it can be lucrative. Obviously, the best case scenario would be pulling the chase pack and getting Trout, um, but in general, you know, you're guaranteed to get something of value probably. Um, from knocking these out. So the first thing I would do is exchanges. Um, if you are going to do exchanges, do them at the start. Um, I did the big boy exchange for each of them. Um, and then other than that, I did not touch uh, any of the other exchanges. If I am like a couple thousand away from something, maybe I'll go do a moment or I'll do an exchange. Um, but other than that, I don't really worry about them too much. I definitely would not pay stubs to do them. I would mainly only do them if you just have the cards already sitting in your binder. Um, I would be careful about what you put in. Do not put in core cards from previous BR runs. Um, do not put in flashback cards, anything like that. Um, so um, the next place I would go is showdowns. Knock out your three showdowns. The nice thing about the showdowns is it counts for the NL and AL. So there's only three of them. Um, and you'll get 20,000 points of team affinity progress in each of those respective divisions. So that is uh, very nice. And then from there, I would be picking some of these classics. I believe that will get you a classic and a captain, probably. Um, so, you know, pick those, make a team out of those, and then you're going to go and approach the conquest. Um, so you're going to be using a team of those players for conquest. Um, you can see this is what mine's looking like right now at the end of this. Um, I have Trout in there just to get PXP with him. Try to, you know, start making him a little better defensively, a little better against lefties um, early. But if you want to completely maximize um, your progress, then obviously he would not be in there. You would only want Team Affinity guys, and you don't even really want this Jazz in there. Um, I just have him in there for something we'll get into here in a minute. Um, but basically, you're making a team out of these type of players um, and running it up. Uh, these classic players need, I believe, 150 PXP each, and the classic pitchers need 350 each. Um, so you guys can, you know, do the math with how many of those you'll need to complete to uh, get close to where you want to be. Um, I am manipulating my rotation right now by having Babe in the fifth spot with 99s in front of him, so I can always face the CPU's worst pitcher, um, and I don't have to worry about sweating against the CPU. Um, against their better pitchers. Um, you can see the bullpen here is like that. Uh, we have Hanky in there, but we're not using him. Um, and then uh, you've got these captains. Captains need stats, right? Captains are stat specific. So for like relievers, it's strikeout or saves. Uh, starters, it's strikeouts or innings pitched. Um, and then position players can be anywhere from total hits, uh, total extra base hits, home runs, and I think there may even be a stolen base mission or two if I'm not too confused. Um, so I'm running a team like this. Um, mainly you want to get to these 97s. After you get to these 97s, they have their own specific mission for each of them. That gives you a little bit. And then they have the big PXP missions. For every 1,000 PXP you earn with some of these 97s from their respective divisions, so you can combine them, and that's when it starts really picking up how fast you can go through TA. Um, you get like 5,000, and then their specific missions is like 3,500, so you're looking at 8,500 for each of these, assuming you get all of them to 1,000 uh, PXP, 
and then you know you have multiple from the same division and then you start really raking in pxp um, once you get to the point where you have two position players from one division and a starting pitcher it is going to fly by um, so after you have finished all the conquests respectively uh, hopefully well you will then have 97s in each division um, I would recommend starting with the AL East Conquest because of Babe Ruth. You guys saw I was using Babe. You can see I'm number 14 on Babe right now. About to be like number 6 probably. Um, the cool thing about Babe is you can give him the Otani treatment. He is by far the best one for earning PXP. He makes the AL East by far the easiest vision to, uh, to accomplish. Um, with the Jazz Chisholm Boost, which we'll get into in a minute... He's like a 122, 124 hitter, um, so he just rakes. He racks up PXP like that, and um, you can boost him with the uh, Tom Hinky boost, but I took it off because it was messing with his spot in the rotation. I'd rather pitch him against the worst CPU pitcher um, than have the CPU's ace pitcher, and then I have to actually focus and try. Um, so this is what I'm doing. You can see he has racked up a ton of PXP. Only played 21 games with him, so that's what? That's two Conquest maps and one game, um, and he is already almost P5. He has already earned that 1,000 PXP goal for his division four times over, going on five times over. Um, and that's not to mention Red Sox, right? He's earned two, one of the missions is 2,000 PXP with a specific team. He has already earned that twice for the Red Sox, so... Uh, Babe has contributed to like 50,000 Team Affinity progress by himself. He makes the AL East by far the easiest division to do. And then when you combine him with like Alejandro Kirk, and I believe I even have Mo, um, or no, I took Jim Palmer um, for when I get into this next part, which is what I was getting into, um, which is mini seasons. You're going to then make a mini season team in this Team Affinity 3. Um, I have not started yet. I just got here. Um, I just finished all the conquests. I wanted to update you guys on the video. Um, so you'll make a team out of these Team Affinity players. Um, you can update it as you go, as missions run out, um, and you can just keep cycling in the new players that you need. Um, once you get to this point, you're going to need starters, right? You can't just pitch Babe every single game, and you probably don't want to. Um, so you're going to need other starters you can pitch with. Um, so that's why I took Jim Palmer. That's why Randy's going to be good. That's why a bunch of these other 97 pitchers will be good. Um, but if you do what I did and just pitch Babe like every single game in Conquest, then you're probably going to have a lot of classic pitchers that need to get done as well um, and team captain pitchers. So um, it's, it's kind of bugging right now. I don't think all of these players should be eligible for this. Um, at all, I think the lineups kind of mess up, so let's go season four only. Um, and that should hopefully course correct us here and show us the right players. Um, and it's still not going to, so I'm gonna pause while I figure this out and I'll get right back. So it's because we were in the wrong team affinity, it should be team affinity four, not the three one. Uh, you can see I didn't play much of the three one last season, so I guess that's why. Um, but here is something of what the lineup would look like for us. Obviously, you do not want core Aaron Judge in here. You do not want any of these guys. I would go to secondary um, and get somebody else you need stats with. Um, for me, it'd be like this random Marsh card or something like that. Um, obviously, I can't run Trout or anything, so you'll have to kind of figure out as you go um, who all you need to get in there, who all you do not. But what is going to make it a lot easier is make sure you're playing at a custom stadium with the team that you're playing with. Um, it helps your pitchers and it helps your batters, right? It helps your batters because you can hit pop-ups for home runs, so they're going to get more PXP. And it helps your pitchers because you're going to have such a run lead that if you just want to shove the starter out there and he gives up 15 runs but you scored 20 runs, um, then you can do that and he's still getting his PXP. Um, the main thing I want to talk about is lock in these collection rewards as you go. When you get 15, you get Hanky. He boosts your pitchers a little bit. Doesn't help you a ton. Um, doesn't change a lot at all. Um, but it is helpful, I suppose. I would not be using these cards. Do not actually use them. Just have them in your lineup for the boost. Do not actually use them. So in Jazz's case here, he boosts all hitters from the Team Affinity and you can see at Tier 3, it is very useful, especially against righties. 
Um, definitely helps out Babe, Bryce Harper, um, Nick Gordon. Uh, makes all those guys like max power guys, so it's very big for that. Um, means you can pretty much just touch the ball at a custom stadium, and then it'll leave. So it's going to help your mini season grind a lot if you have this Jazz card. Um, so throw him in the lineup, pull him out for somebody else. It could be um, him in center field, and you put in like Harrison Bader or um, the Pirates left fielder, Jason Bay, or I don't know. I don't know. You could play anybody in center field that needs um, that PXP. Instead of Jazz, you could put him at shortstop and then put in Jimmy Rollins for him or second base and put in Ian Kinsler for him. Um, anybody like that, right? Just make sure you sub him out. Um, get the boost from him. Sub him out. It should help you earn a little more PXP. Do not be using these players. I know it is tempting. They look like decent players, and they all do get the boost, um, but they are not contributing to your team affinity goals other than um, the team-specific ones, which you don't really want to focus on team-specific goals. Um, if they happen as you go, then they happen, um, like with Babe, but I would not focus on them too hard. I would run a lineup something like this um, without Trout being in there and just start racking up PXP for those. Um, and, yeah, that's that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much it. Um, I can hide the you know my camera for you guys, show you guys what the wheel looks like with the boost. You can see Nick Gordon is an absolute monster. Makes getting, um, yeah, I mean, you see the stats. Makes getting 150 PXP with him, a cakewalk. Um, Joey Votto I just have on there. Um, the Snappily card, I believe, needs home runs. Made him super easy. I don't even think I got him done yet, but the AL East is such a cakewalk with what Babe is. Um, that doesn't matter. Uh, Harrison Bader, absolutely elite with the boost. Um, Babe's like 125, 125. Gives Jimmy Rollins some power, so maybe he'll actually hit a home run. Um, this Ryan Braun card looks like the best team of Indy card on paper. I promise you he's not. His swing is absolutely horrendous. Um, makes Kirk very good. I struggled with this card at the start. He's been raking recently. Uh, makes Frank Thomas just an absolute monster. Makes Bryce Harper absolutely crazy. Um, it's going to simplify the grind a lot for you guys. And once you get to that mini season stage where you can just hop into mini season um, and just hit pop-ups for home runs over and over again, um, it's a cakewalk at that part, right? The hard part is getting to this stage right here where you're at like 50% and everything. And you finally have one of those 97 bosses from each division. Um, once you get that one, you get the second one very quickly after. Once you get the second one, you get the third one pretty quickly. And once you have three, which my preferred method for that is two position players and a pitcher from each division. Um, a pitcher that you can go to often, like a starter, but you can't take a reliever if you're actually going to use them a lot. Um, it's going to fly by. You're done at that point. After you've gotten three players from each division, I think it's pretty much done at that point, and you don't really have to sweat it anymore. It will happen over time, and you can see my controller batteries have ran out, so I guess I've been talking um, long enough. But, yeah, that's how I would approach Team Affinity. I'll probably do, like, a tier list on the new content pretty soon for you guys. I know a lot of you guys do enjoy that. Until next time.